these are three vastly different mini PCs. I don't know if you guys saw this, but a couple weeks ago on the STH main site, I was the one that broke the story that Intel was discontinuing their Nooks. And so Asus is gonna continue making the Nooks, but they already have a line of these like mini PCs. And it's not just like one or two, they have a ton of them and they're really designed more for like, you know, corporations and stuff like that rather than as consumer products. And so after that, I sent a note over to the folks at Asus and I was like, okay, well, what if we did a really low power system, a faster like current gen system, and then also we did like a Chrome box or something like that. So I finally convinced Asus to send these. So we're gonna say that Asus is sponsoring this video because they sent these units. And instead of doing a video for all of them, I decided, well, why don't we just go through and we'll go through these really fast, show you the different options. And then on the STH main site, of course, we'll have our normal reviews that'll be published over the next couple of weeks. I just really wanted to cover a lot of ground. And so that's what we're gonna do today. So with that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, the first unit we're gonna look at is this one right here, which is the Asus Expert Center PN42. Now this system uses the Intel Alder Lake N series of processors. So these are all E cores that are in these. And we get up to a four core Intel N200 processor, which is exactly what's in this one. And the total TDP for the entire SOC with the GPU, with the four cores, all that kind of stuff is only six watts. And so although this may look like a fanned mini PC, it's a plastic case, sure, but it's actually a fanless mini PC because of the big heatsink that's inside. Now this platform starts at about $270 MSRP before discounts or anything like that, but of course it scales up and down based on the number of options, what kind of CPU, all that kind of stuff you get. But the thing I thought was crazy about this thing is that there is a ton of IO, even though it's a cost optimized platform. I mean, just take a look at the front. We get two USB 3.2 type A ports and these are 10 gigabits per second ports. I mean, that's awesome. We also get two audio jacks, a microphone and a combo jack. And normally on mini PCs, we're lucky if we get one. One other little tiny feature on the front is that you actually get an IR receiver on this. So if you have like a remote or something like that, you can just blast it right into this thing. That's a kind of cool feature that we haven't seen on a lot of other mini PCs lately. On the back, we get our USB 2 ports for our keyboard and mouse. We also get two USB 3, and these are five gigabit per second ports. We even get a third little USB 2 port down here just for the heck of it. Now, standard for display options, you get an HDMI as well as a display port, but ours also has a VGA port because, you know, hey, why not just have every kind that you can think of. But this port is configurable, so there are other modules that you can get here, or you can just have nothing, I guess. Other ports on the back, though, we get our DCN, and then the craziest thing, we get two two and a half gig Ethernet ports. Now, getting inside the system is super easy because there's just four little screws on these feet. You pop the cover off, and then you're inside, and you can go service this thing. Inside, though, you're going to find a couple things that are completely awesome. One of them is the fact that this uses an Intel AX211 Wi Fi 6E solution. Now, because this is Alder Lake N, we only get a single memory channel, and something that Asus does that I don't know how I really feel about, they're using DDR4. Now DDR4, of course, is less costly, but DDR5 does perform better, especially when you only have a single channel of memory. And in this system, it came with four gigabytes of memory and running Windows 11 Pro with four gigabytes of memory was uh, was honestly not the best experience. I would totally go and get eight gigs at least in the system, if not 16. This thing also came with a 128 gig SSD, which of course is another cost optimization thing. I wish it came with a 256 gig. Now, when you pull the motherboard out, there's this giant heatsink that's cooling this little six watt TDP CPU. When we get to both the performance and the power consumption section, you're gonna see exactly what it means to have a six watt passively cooled CPU. Okay, the next one I wanna look at is this one over here, which is the Asus Chromebox 5. You might guess it by the name, but this uses Google's Chrome OS. Now I'll be the first to admit that I haven't used Chrome OS in a long time. And the last time I tried it, it was frankly using a pretty underpowered box, but this is not that same experience. This thing is downright fast. Inside this, we have an Intel Core i7 1260p processor. Also, because we have the Core i7, we get the Iris Xe graphics. And talking about the I.O. on this, it's not like some thin clients where you get very little I.O. This has a lot more going on. So on the front, we get two USB type A ports that are, I think, like 3.2, so like 10 gigabit per second ports. You also get a combo headset jack, which is always useful, and the power button, of course. But then there's a micro SD card slot here, too. Personally, I think it's always better to have a SD card slot instead of a micro SD card slot because it's always easier to go from like an SD card and have an adapter for your micro SD card, right? Okay, looking at the back of the system, we get two USB type A ports and these are again, 10 gigabit per second ports. We get two and a half gig ethernet on a Chromebox, which is pretty darn awesome. 
Now in terms of display outputs, we get two HDMI ports, one display port, and then we get perhaps the craziest feature on one of these Chrome boxes that I was not expecting, a Thunderbolt 4 port. One of the other fun things, they actually have a 15 watt wireless charger built into a lot of these. Now getting inside the system, you just pop off the bottom cover and once you're inside, you're gonna see some fairly standard mini PC parts. We get two SO DIMMs and these are actually DDR4 3200 SO DIMMs in here. We have two eight gig DIMMs giving us a total of 16 gigabytes of memory. The Wi-Fi again is an Intel AX211, which means we get Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5 as well. And for an SSD, we get a 256 gig SSD. I have to say from a hardware perspective, I would have liked to have seen DDR5 nowadays just because DDR5 has come down a lot in price. But a little while ago, I get it, you know, DDR4 was a lot less expensive. It still is a little bit less expensive. And in a device like this, those dollars probably matter more than a little bit more memory bandwidth. Next, let's take a look at this mini PC, which is something that's probably a more traditional mini PC like we've reviewed in the past. This is the Asus Expert Center PN64E1. Now this one has Windows 11 Pro already pre-installed on it, and it also has the sticker with the Asus Corporate Stable, which is a program that Asus has been doing for years for their kind of more business-oriented PCs. Inside this, we have an Intel Core i5-13500H processor. And as you'll see in the performance section, it's actually pretty darn fast. In terms of I think folks are gonna like this one because this has two USB type A 10 gigabit per second ports, which is kind of like a theme of all of these. Like the other units, there's also a combo headset jack, which is always nice. And then there's a type C port, but this is not just like a USB type C port. This is a Thunderbolt 4 port. Adding Thunderbolt to systems often costs a little bit more than not adding it. So we see a lot of mini PC vendors just like skip Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt in systems. And this one actually has it, which I really like. Now swapping to the back of the system, you're gonna see a couple of fun things. Things. The first thing is the video output. You're gonna see that we have two HDMI and one display ports. But when you get inside the system, this is actually on its own little board and you can configure this to be different things and that's just the configuration that we have. For its corporate customers, I think Asus actually has other options that you can configure. Aside from that though, we get two USB type A 5 gigabit per second ports, another 10 gigabit per second type A port. Another common feature is that we get a two and a half gig ethernet port in this one. And then we get another Thunderbolt 4 port. Thunderbolt 4, I think in these is awesome because you can do things like add NICs and stuff like that, like Thunderbolt products. Having two on here is awesome. Getting inside the system is pretty easy. There are these four screws and there's something that we've seen before, which is this kind of like accordion or I don't know what to call it design, but there are different levels inside the system. So you can have things like you can have two M.2 SSDs if you wanted. And those SSDs can be PCIe Gen 4 and VMI SSDs. Inside we get two DDR5 SO DIMM slots, so you can go up to the 64 gigs of memory if you really wanted to, or 32 gigs fairly easily. Wi-Fi on board is an Intel AX210, so it's a Wi-Fi 6E solution too, another kind of commonality between all of these. The one thing I wanted to do though is show you the size of this compared to like an Intel Nook, because I think a lot of people know that as just a frame of reference in terms of size. And you can see that it's, you know, it's definitely bigger, which I actually kind of like because that means that Asus was able to go and put a larger cooling solution in this. And you also have a little bit more room inside to go do interesting things like do that accordion and have more modular components inside. At the end of the day, these things are really small and I just prefer to have a quieter system because I, don't, I might see it, but I don't wanna hear it. And we're gonna see more about that in our power consumption and noise section. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of these. And let's go from like the lowest power one all the way up to the fastest one or the highest power one. And so we're gonna start with your fanless unit here, which is our Intel N200 based unit. Now, something that we saw was with the four gigabyte configuration and Windows 11 Pro, it was uh, it was doing Geekbench, but doing Geekbench very slowly. And the reason for that was actually, we were pretty much running out of RAM, even though we hadn't installed a whole lot of stuff or anything like that. And this is basically a bare system with Geekbench installed. So what we did was we did our quick swap out to an eight gigabyte module instead of our four gigabyte module, just to give us a little bit more memory headroom. And then we also just booted up into Ubuntu just to see if the like lighter weight OS would help a little bit with that. And once we were there, we have tons of data here. So one thing that we were able to see is that this thing performed okay. It didn't necessarily perform as well as some of the DDR5 N200 solutions. And the other thing that we noticed because we looked in the BIOS was that we couldn't find a setting to allow us to change the power limit. And I understand why, because this is a fanless unit, so you don't want people going in, even if it could give you more performance. But at the same time, I do think that that would help you get a little bit more performance. I think some of the other systems that we've seen have higher power limits than this one has. 
We'll look at that a little bit more in detail in our power consumption section. Now the Chrome box, we had a fun one. We could actually run Geekbench, which I was pretty surprised about in Chrome OS. So it's a different OS, but the overall processor on here was not too bad and not necessarily crazy far off what we've seen in just kind of like native Linux or Windows based systems. Now we could shoehorn Linux onto this one. And, uh, and you know, I, I, we, we actually did that and the results are actually pretty good. But then I took a step back. I'm like, look, nobody or not a lot of people are actually going to go and put Linux on this thing right away. Most folks, at least when they purchase it, are going to first use Chrome OS. And this is, let's just put it this way. This is a perfectly snappy processor. This does not feel laggy at all. This is certainly for anything that you're doing in Chrome OS. This is a fast Alder Lake CPU Core i7. This is an awesome platform from a performance perspective, but you don't necessarily have as many options to use that performance because you're in Chrome OS. I think sometimes we get super focused on the numbers, but at the end of the day, this is really just trying to provide a good Chrome OS experience. And I think this nailed it. In fact, this might actually be too fast. Now, when we get to the PN64E1, we get that Intel Core i5 at 13500H. We get a little bit more TDP, and this is definitely a faster system. It's actually the first time that we've benchmarked the 13500H. And so we were going and doing not just Windows benchmarks, but Linux benchmarks on it. And we saw that the performance was pretty darn good. For like all desktop workloads and like, you know, playing back video or capturing video or any of that kind of stuff, you know, this is a 13th gen Intel Core processor. It's darn fast at that. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption and the noise from the Chrome box. So when we have this set up, and uh, it's kind of a little bit of a weird setup because we can't remote desktop into it easily anymore. Uh, and, and what I just want to show you guys real quick, though, is just how low power this is. So even though this is a fairly high-end CPU, we still get idle in the Chrome box of like, you know, maybe 7, 8 watts is pretty common, maybe up to 10, it bounces around a bit, but it's still pretty darn low. But the noise on this thing is actually pretty good. So if we're in our 34 DBA noise floor studio. And I can tell you that even just sitting right here, I mean, I can barely hear it, but a lot of the other fans for like the lights and stuff are a lot louder. And so when we have it hooked up to our meter over here, we see that we're only getting maybe like 34 and a half DBA or so, plus or minus a bit. So it's actually a very, I mean, this is just a very quiet system, especially at idle. Now under load, it's a little bit different. And let's take a listen to this running Geekbench 6. You're gonna notice that our single thread, we're only getting into about the 34 or so watt range. Okay, so now this system's under load and you're gonna see that our, when we actually get these little Geekbench spikes, we get into maybe the 50 to 65 watt range, which is not too bad, honestly. This thing has a 150 watt power adapter, which is pretty huge. And I'll just let you hear this real quick because it's definitely louder. but it's only running in about the 35 dBA range on a 34 dBA noise floor studio, so not too bad at all. Now the Asus PN42, this is an interesting machine because it is designed to be a super low power like kiosk or just desktop or something like that. And let's go kind of look at the idle power consumption first. First thing you're gonna see is that the idle power consumption is like maybe five, six watts, seven watts, somewhere in there. That is pretty good and there's no noise coming from this. So we're not gonna go do the noise test here. But what I do wanna do is kind of show you what it looks like under load. And putting the system under load, we're only getting about 22 watts. But what happens fairly quickly is that we go down to this like 11, 12 watt range in this just because I think you only get a very short burst of that kind of like maximum performance and then it just kind of goes back down into low power mode. Now we looked in the BIOS to see if there were settings that would allow you to go and change the power profiles, right? Like get longer turbos or something like that. And we don't see it. And I think the reason for that is just that this, that's kind of like what this cooling level kind of gives you and Asus feels comfortable with. And so you only get a short burst of that performance and then you drop back down into a lower clock frequency. I do wish that maybe this had some better cooling or whatever that would allow you to go and run the N200 at, you know, 100% all the time. Because when you do that the N200 is actually a fairly capable processor. On the other hand though, I, I get why Asus is doing this, but um, I do wish that there was just a little bit more performance on tap for this one. And the kind of crazy thing is that this thing is using like maximum 22 watts or something like that. And the power adapter is a 65 watt power adapter. So you can go plug basically whatever you want in on the USB side and you have plenty of power here. Let's talk about the power consumption of the PN64E1. Because uh, what you're gonna see is that the idle power consumption is jumping around between maybe about eight watts and 11 or 12 watts, somewhere in that range, it's Windows. So it's just jumping around. What can you do on these new Raptor Lake cores? 
Noise, however, is very good in our 34 dBA noise floor studio. We're getting somewhere in that maybe 34 and a half ish dBA range, which is awesome. And to me, at least the sound of this, it would just become background noise. I just wouldn't even notice it in most settings. But with that, let's watch what happens when we go and put this thing under load. You're gonna see that our noise meter or sound meter is now in the 45, 44, 45 dBA range. And then you're gonna see the power consumption was up around 100 watts. That lasts for a few seconds, but then we see that our power drops down to maybe that 50 to 57 watt range. And I'll just mention really briefly that this system actually came with a 120 watt Delta power brick, which is pretty darn good and seems like it works for the system. With that, let's get to our key lessons learned. So with all these videos, I like to have a key lessons learned where we can talk about well, what do we learn from doing all of this testing and just trying these systems out. I think there are definitely a couple things we learned and I think let's start with the PN42. This system, I feel like it could use a little bit of a power bump and maybe a cooling bump to allow you to have more power. I also kind of wish that it had eight gigabytes of memory instead of four. It just feels like four is a little bit too little for a four like core system of like this generation, like all the way like N. But on the other hand, I will just say that I get the idea of the system System, just kind of a super low cost system that doesn't really you know make noise and is just low power on the other hand there's like the chrome box right and the chrome box to me is like the craziest one because this thing i mean this has a fast processor i mean this thing screams we've definitely seen a bunch of mini pcs that are nowhere near as fast even though this is running chrome os and stuff and i actually do like the footprint i think it has a decent set of ports on it and all that kind of stuff fast processor i mean there's a lot to like in this little system System. The one thing though that I kept thinking about with this is that like I really love the experience of being able to set it up easily and like not have to worry about anything. And I think a lot of folks, you know, there are a lot of organizations that that's just kind of how they want to operate and I understand 100% why. The other use case to me though that's really interesting with this is putting it into developer mode and installing Ubuntu using Crouton or something like that and actually using Linux on this because this is a fast PC. If this was a Ubuntu Linux PC, I think people would be super excited about that for anybody that doesn't want to run Windows as an example. Now Chrome OS is not something that I've used daily, but we even put this thing on like a 4K OLED and it looked great. I mean, this actually worked really well and I was probably surprised at how much I like this. And I was thinking like, okay, where could we use this or where would we use this at STH? And last but not least, let's talk about the PN64E1. I think that this system is really cool. This is definitely in the same vein as a lot of the other mini PCs and NUCs and stuff like that that we've reviewed previously. I think ASUS just needs to do a better job of just kind of getting the word out the fact that they have something like this. At the same time, I also wouldn't mind if they had a little bit bigger of a chassis. I think there's like this, this like need to hit a smaller chassis. But if you look at it compared to like the PN42, you can see the PN42 is actually a little bit, just slightly bigger, right? And so to me, I can see the competing priorities because on one hand, everybody always wants to have like the smallest mini PC possible. But on the other hand, this thing could might actually be a little bit better if it was just a little bit bigger and had better cooling or just maybe not better cooling, but maybe I should say just quieter cooling under like that 100% load scenario. But overall, I actually really like this system. And one of the biggest comments that we get when we do mini PC reviews from places like Hong Kong or China or something like that is like, you know, well, we don't know the brand or like, how can we trust the brand? Or like, what about updates or like any of that kind of stuff. And I think that's just what you get maybe with Asus. Now, I know a lot of folks have had different experiences with Asus support, but like, you know, it is a much bigger company than some of the other mini PC makers out there. And so I, I can totally see why you would want something like this. This is also, you know, with the corporate stable model, like this is really designed for being like, you know, having business support. And so it's a little different than what we get in a consumer system. And so I totally understand why Asus makes this product. It's actually something, again, I, I was actually really surprised with how much I like this one. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at like three different mini PC options from Asus. I, I think it was a lot of fun just to kind of test three totally different systems. If you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.